Hello, I am Owen Adams. You might know me from Those Aren't Biscuits, and if you do, then you might recognize this music. Yo, mate, we miss you, G. Wait, sorry. This music. Well, it might not be our music for much longer. You see, when I put our first episode together, I went looking for a piece of public domain music we could use without any trouble. And I did this like a total professional, by googling public domain songs, and grabbing an old blues piece from a site about African American musicians. Uh, the page listed the songs as public domain, and I took the file without doing any further research. Uh, my bad. Mia culpa. I got that wrong. Obviously. You see, our theme song is a version of an old blues piece called How Long Blues. Originally written by Leroy Carr in 1928, How Long Blues was a massively influential song, and it has been covered by uh, T-Bone Walker, Ray Charles, uh, I think Eric Clapton did a version. Leroy Carr died in 1935, before the version of the song that we use was recorded. Uh, in 1939, uh, the song was recorded by Wingy Manone and his orchestra, with uh, the bouncy vibe of a Tom and Jerry cartoon, and that's the version we use. Wingy Manone died in 1982, at the age of 82. Uh, as for his orchestra, who knows, uh, perhaps they're still out there, but I doubt it. Uh, Wingy's version of How Long Blues was published by Bluebird, a sub-label of RCA Records that was absorbed into Sony's uh, publishing machine. Which is where we come in. For 20 episodes now, we've used this version of How Long Blues as our theme music, blissfully unaware of its copyright history. That is, until we uploaded our first episode to YouTube, where it was flagged by their content ID system. Uh, at first, incorrectly, uh, but finally by a group called The Orchard, who operate on behalf of Sony. A content ID flag doesn't mean much. The video is still there, anyone can watch it and comment on it, but it means we can't monetize it in future if we want it. Maybe we never would. But at this stage, I think it's important to ask, who is copyright law protecting? Leroy Carr died in 1928. In his life, he borrowed from other artists, as other artists have borrowed from him. Wingy Manone died 33 years ago and was only covering the song. The musicians who worked on the song are probably dead and were uncredited and probably unpaid anyway. Uh, none of the people who work at Bluebird are still around and probably weren't getting checks in the mail. And this is before we even get onto the abhorrent treatment of artists by record companies at the time which was so bad that musicians actually went on strike for two years in the 1940s. No, the only people who benefit are the accountants at Sony, a company that had the good fortune to buy another company that used to be another company, and that a long time ago paid a pittance to a man who is now dead. At this stage, copyright law is working counter to its original intentions stifling the creativity of people who actually want to make use of music and art for the profit of businesses that exist only to hoard archive rights and squeeze every penny they can out of them. It's wrong, and Sony should be ashamed. The PS4 is still great, though. <laughs>